properties that exist for these three shapes. Before we discuss those properties, I want to demonstrate each one's definition based on markings. So a trapezoid is any quadrilateral that has one set of parallel sides. In an isosceles trapezoid, not only is one set of sides parallel, but the two sides that are not parallel are also congruent to each other. And my last shape is the kite. There are no parallel sides. However, for any kite, I have two sets of consecutive sides that are congruent. So that's our definitions for those three shapes. Before we look at properties for those three shapes, let's just briefly go through the parallelograms. On the far left, I have pictures drawn to demonstrate the definition of each one. So my top picture is a parallelogram, and it has four properties that exist. My next shape is a rectangle because there are four 90 degree angles. Because it's a parallelogram, it gets the same properties as the parallelograms. However, the rectangle does have one unique property in which its diagonal lines are congruent to each other. My third shape is the rhombus. Once again, it gets the exact same properties that the parallelograms do but there are also two more properties that exist for all rhombi. And my fourth shape is a square. And because the square is a parallelogram, a rectangle, and also a rhombus, it has all the properties. Now we need to discuss the properties about the trapezoid. If I look at my properties that exist, the only thing that's true about the trapezoid, it really doesn't have any of the properties. However, opposite sides are parallel. That is true for one set of sides, and that's based on its definition. The next shape is my isosceles trapezoid. The isosceles trapezoid, and we will look at a demonstration of this. Opposite angles are congruent. We're going to take a look at these three shapes for the quadrilaterals. First thing I want to do is give you the definition of each one. And I'm going to mark my picture to demonstrate their definition. So a trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has one set of parallel sides. The isosceles trapezoid, based on definition, it has one set of parallel sides, and the non-parallel sides are congruent. So that's the definition for an isosceles trapezoid. My third shape is the kite. The kite does not have any sides that are parallel. However, the kite does have some congruent sides. I have two sets of consecutive sides that are congruent, and that's the definition for a kite. The next thing I'm going to look at are properties. So before I look at the properties of these three shapes, I just want to do a quick overview of the parallelograms. My top shape, based on definition, I marked each shape. In the parallelograms, this is its definition, having opposite sides parallel. These are four properties that exist. My next shape is a rectangle because it has four right angles. Because it's a parallelogram, it gets the same properties. However, it does have one unique property, that the diagonal lines are congruent. Third shape is a rhombus. The rhombus has the same properties as the parallelogram as well as these two properties in addition to it. And my fourth shape is a square. Based on its definition, it has four right angles and four congruent sides. Because it's a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus, the square has all the properties of the shapes above it. 
Next, we're going to look at properties for the trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, and kite. So starting with our trapezoid. It does not really contain any of these properties. However, there is one set that's true for this property. The opposite sides are parallel. In a parallelogram, that's true for both sets, but it's only true for one set in a trapezoid. In the isosceles trapezoid, opposite sides are congruent. There is only one set based on its definition. And once again, there's one set parallel based on its definition. There is another property that exists for all the isosceles trapezoids. The diagonal lines in every isosceles trapezoid will always be congruent to each other. And my last shape is the kite. In the kite, there is one pair of angles, opposite angles that are congruent, there is one diagonal line that's bisected, not both of them, but one of them. There is one diagonal line that is an angle bisector. But this property holds true for both diagonal lines. The diagonal lines will be perpendicular. So I'm going to demonstrate these facts in visual pictures. So starting with my trapezoid, based on its definition, there's one set of parallel sides. If I look back at the properties, nothing else exists. I don't have any other angles I can assume to be congruent. I don't have sides that are congruent. The only thing that is true for the trapezoids, and it's because I have parallel lines, the two consecutive angles would be supplementary. And that goes back to consecutive interior angles between parallel lines. So that's about the only thing that's true for the trapezoid. And it doesn't matter which set. It could be these two angles on the far left. But the consecutive interior angles are supplementary. In the isosceles trapezoid, Based on its definition, I do have two sides that are congruent. I do have two sides that are parallel. But something else that's true for every isosceles trapezoid, we would consider these to be base angles. And if you would consider drawing this to be an isosceles triangle and just cut the top off, these would be base angles. Those angles would be congruent to each other as well as this set would also be congruent. That's going to be true for any isosceles trapezoid. So I do have some angles that are congruent to each other in the isosceles trapezoid. Very similar to the regular trapezoid, these two angles are supplementary. These ones are supplementary as well, so the non-congruent angles must also add up to equal 180 degrees. In my kite, I don't have any sides that are parallel. However, in the kite, the two angles where the non-congruent sides intersect, those two angles will be congruent to each other. So that's why in a property, we didn't mark that opposite angles are congruent, but there is one pair of angles that would be congruent to each other. Now looking further at these shapes, we're going to put the diagonal lines in. There's no angles that are congruent to each other in the trapezoid other than alternate interior angles and that's because we have some parallel sides. In the isosceles trapezoid, it was mentioned one of the properties. The two diagonal lines are congruent, so that blue line and red line would be the same length. That is not true in the trapezoids only, but in the isosceles trapezoid, the blue line and the red line would be the exact same length. 
something else that's true in the isosceles trapezoid. And I'm going to put some markings on here. The diagonal lines are not bisected. That means that this part of my blue diagonal line and this part are not the same. However, these pieces or segments are. So with an, within an isosceles trapezoid, you will always have two isosceles triangles. So with that in mind, I'm going to mark some more angles that are congruent. Because I have isosceles triangles, these two angles should be congruent. These ones are congruent to each other as well as the ones down below because they're also alternate interior angles. So those four angles will be congruent to each other. And in my kite, my diagonal lines are not congruent, so the blue line and the red one are not congruent. However, one of the diagonal lines is bisected. In this example, it's my blue diagonal line. So the diagonal line that connects the two angles that are congruent to each other, that's the one that gets bisected. The other property that's true for all kites, the diagonal lines are perpendicular. So there will always be four right angles within the inside of that kite where the two diagonal lines intersect. And also going back to the properties, it was mentioned that one of the diagonal lines is an angle bisector. In this case, it's my red one. This red segment bisects the original kite angle into two equal pieces. So I'm going to go back and show that a little bit differently. Those two angles would be the same. That top angle in this example is bisected. As well as this bottom angle is also bisected. However, these angles alone are not the same. Only the larger angle of the original kite where the two non-congruent sides intersect, those two are congruent to each other. So there's a look at properties for these three shapes and um, some congruent parts about them and true facts.